Now, since you seem to enjoy me crowdsourcing a few cool terminal programs last month, I decided to repeat the process, but this time to gather some data about what people actually use on Linux. So I made a little non-exhaustive, non-scientific survey that I posted on the YouTube channel's community page and on Mastodon, and I gathered more than 9,500 answers on the distros, the type of hardware, the windowing servers, the web browsers, and the other things that you use. So in this video, we'll look at the statistics, at what surprised me, what I was expecting, what I was absolutely not expecting, and try and find some justifications or explanations for these differences. And we'll also look at this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, and it's a great project for streaming any kind of apps or operating system or desktop straight to your web browser. They recently released a new version of Chasm VNC. That's one of the open source projects that I featured in my remote desktop video in August. And this new version of Chasm VNC adds support for multiple monitors for the Linux desktops that you're streaming to your browser, meaning that you can now span that desktop across multiple browser windows without having to install an agent or a plugin. It's all native. So you can now be a lot more productive when you're streaming those Linux desktops to your browser because you can take advantage of your multi-monitor setup even when you're just streaming that desktop or operating system. The Chasm VNC open source project is available in the Chasm Tech GitHub page, or you can also find it within the Chasm Workspaces Community Edition using the links provided in the description. So just a quick disclaimer, this is only based on a survey that 9,500 people who follow me on Mastodon and on YouTube answered. It is not supposed to represent the entirety of the Linux desktop community. Obviously, people who follow me are more likely to like what I create, meaning that they're likely relatively interested in Flatpak, Wayland, and a user-friendly desktop experience. Ultra-hardcore rising enthusiasts, tiling window manager fans, and the like are probably underrepresented here. Also, the survey was only about Linux desktop experience, so using it as a daily personal computer, not for servers, results would probably be very different, and Arch would probably not be in the lead in this case. And of course, it is a small sample. 9,500 answers isn't bad, it's statistically significant, but it's still only a fraction of the people who use Linux. So take those numbers with a grain of salt. Okay, so let's start with distros. And right off the bat, I am very surprised at the results. Arch and Arch-based distros seem to represent 29% of answers, way higher than Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based distros at 22% if we include Linux Mint, or 16% if we don't include it. It's higher than Fedora, which sits at 19% of answers, or 22% if we include Fedora derivatives like Nobara. And that was pretty surprising to me. I always felt that in my community, Arch and Arch-based distros were also ran. I was expecting predominantly Ubuntu-based distros or Fedora-based distributions. So yeah, Arch is definitely way more popular than I thought, so maybe I should stop poking fun at that distro at some point. Another surprising number is NixOS, sitting at 7%. It is more than Linux Mint, it is more than OpenSUSE, and more than Debian. I also was not expecting Nix to be as popular because it's sort of a complex distribution to get to grips with and I always assumed my audience would lean more towards simple to set up, simple to use things. So if we take into consideration the Arch numbers and NixOS's relative popularity, I think I have to re-examine one of my biases here. Even in my relatively user-friendly Linux community, people do have the skills and do have the tendency to run way more complex distros that aren't necessarily plug and play. Now, another thing that surprised me is SteamOS. It only got 39 answers out of the 9,500, meaning virtually no one seems to use their Steam Deck as their main computer. Since Valve sold millions of these, I was expecting to be relatively well represented, probably at 3 or 4%. Turns out that decks probably were sold to people who already enjoy Linux and already have a Linux desktop or laptop that they use as their main computer. 
Now still on the distro side of things, it's also clear that what we unceremoniously lump into the immutable distros category isn't where most people go for their desktop systems. 89% of people who answered the survey said that they do not use an immutable distro, meaning that these things might very well be the future, but they are not the present for most users, at least not those who took the survey. Of course, we need to take into account that this survey was meant to represent the main system that people run. Some people might have a secondary system where they play around with an immutable distro. Still, it does mean that most people, in my community at least, just do not run immutable distributions. They prefer the tried and true package-based, non-image based version of their distributions. So already a bunch of surprising results to me and don't hesitate to let me know in the comments if those surprise you as well or if further results in this video also surprise you. I'm always open to hearing what you think about this and some potential reasons why certain things might be overrepresented compared to what I thought they would be. Next we have the desktop environments and tiling window managers and here again I was surprised at the results. Plasma is, on the surface, the most used desktop environment out there, at least by people who were reached by and answered the survey. It sits at 30%, way above tiling window managers. But also, I voluntarily split the GNOME answer into more categories. Vanilla GNOME, or GNOME with very few extensions, GNOME with more extensions, and various very divergent implementations of GNOME, like what Ubuntu or Pop! OS ship. Vanilla GNOME sits at 14%, but if we tally up all the GNOME implementations, we land on 35%, beating KDE soundly. The reason why I split those answers was to try and see if people use GNOME as intended by the developers, or if they always try to extend it. And the answer seems to be that vanilla GNOME is not as popular as GNOME with more extensions. Still, GNOME is a very popular desktop, probably because it is the default on a lot of distributions, but also because no matter if it doesn't have as many options as KDE, it is actually very easy to customize using extensions. We also see that, in my community at least, everything else is an also ran. Cinnamon has good results at 7%, XFC sits at 3%, but everything else is pretty much non-existent, whether it's Mate, Elementary OS's desktop called Pantheon, Budgie, Unity, Deepin, and the like. Which also means that fragmentation isn't nearly as bad as what people think, because you basically only have two major options, it's KDE or it's GNOME. And it can also be tiling window managers. These gathered up 21% of votes, meaning that they're actually the third thing used by people, far above any other desktop than GNOME or KDE. I asked people which tiling window manager they used, and here we do have some fragmentation. Hyperland seems to be very popular right now at almost 48% of answers. We also have Sway at 12%, i3 at 11%, and then a smattering of others like Awesome WM, PSPWM, Qtile, Xmonad, and more. And here I definitely did make a mistake in that form because I left out a bunch of popular options that I just didn't really know about because the other category gathered up 15% of votes, meaning that I forgot at least one major tiling WM in there. Let me know which one you think it is, but yeah, next time I'll make sure to learn more about window managers to include more relevant options in there. Still, I was also surprised at the results here. I was not expecting Wayland compositors to gobble up two thirds of the answers. My own personal preconceived notion was that first, tiling window manager users were a vocal minority compared to desktop users, but it's clearly not the case. And I was expecting tiling window manager users to mostly not like Wayland and to want to stick to X11 since X11 offers a lot more choice. And I was wrong on both accounts. Not only in my community people seem to really enjoy tiling window managers, but they also really seem to enjoy Wayland compositors, which I was not expecting. Speaking of which, Wayland got 66% of answers here versus 34% for X11. Meaning that while Wayland is often criticized in the comments of my videos, with stuff ranging from it doesn't work well to it should be abandoned immediately, it's garbo, 
Well, it looks like most people are actually using Wayland now. Again, it is a it's my community thing here. Since I regularly talk positively about Wayland and try to promote it, most people who probably hate Wayland just do not watch my channel, I would assume. And so if you asked another Linux channel about Wayland or X11, you probably would get widely different results. I am surprised by this though, probably because of the amounts of comments I get criticizing Wayland compared to virtually no one commenting and saying that Wayland is great. So it's probably another vocal minority thing here. As per hardware, I asked people which kind of GPU and CPU they used. For CPUs, AMD and Intel are really evenly matched at 50% for AMD and 49% for Intel, the last percent being for ARM-based CPUs. Judging from results from the Steam survey that usually places AMD at 70% of Linux gamers, I was expecting AMD CPUs to be overrepresented here, but that doesn't seem to be the case. As per GPUs, AMD takes the lead here, but not by much. People who only have a dedicated AMD GPU represent 24% of answers. And if we add that to people who only have an integrated AMD GPU, or some combo using integrated graphics and a dedicated AMD GPU, we get to 39% of answer. Combining the same statistics for NVIDIA, we land on 37%, only two points lower than for AMD. Pure Intel configurations represent 22% of answers for integrated graphics and 1% for dedicated Intel only, plus another percent for people who run a hybrid config with a dedicated Intel GPU. So at most 24%. It is a pretty even distribution of devices here. I was expecting AMD to have a lot more. I was expecting Intel to have a lot less because they didn't sell a lot of dedicated GPUs. But I guess a lot of people just run the integrated Intel GPU. And I was also surprised at Nvidia having that much support from Linux users. And speaking of which, people who run an Nvidia GPU predominantly use the proprietary drivers. 87% of people who run a dedicated NVIDIA GPU use these, when only 14% use the Nuvo drivers. Presumably these are people with older cards that NVIDIA sort of abandoned and for which Nuvo provides better performance. As per the provenance of that hardware, a lot of people seem to build their own computers to run Linux on, at 44% of answers. 40% of people who took the survey bought a PC from a major Windows manufacturer with Windows pre-installed, or no operating system if the option was available. This is an option I should have added to the form. Probably I just wasn't expecting major manufacturers to actually let you buy without Windows pre-installed. Apart from that, only 4% said they used a computer from a Linux manufacturer, like Tuxedo, System76, Slimbook, and the like. Only 2% use a Mac, and interestingly, 5% bought a computer from a major manufacturer that came with Linux pre-installed, so presumably from Dell or Lenovo, as these are the two main ones that have the option, as far as I know. And it's pretty interesting stuff, because it means that people prefer buying from big-name manufacturers with Windows or no operating system, rather than buying from dedicated manufacturers that ship with Linux pre-installed. I paired that question with another one, asking how well Linux ran on people's computers. And overwhelmingly, it seems that hardware compatibility is really good these days. 63% of respondents said that they experienced zero issues after installing Linux. And 23% said they did have small problems that they managed to fix. Only 13% said that there's still hardware that doesn't work at all on their PCs and 1% said that their computer performs really badly under Linux. And of course, since a lot of people answered that they built their own PCs, chances are things were going to work well in the first place because they presumably picked the components well to run with Linux if they built that computer specifically for Linux. But still, it does seem to indicate that Linux hardware troubles are mostly a thing of the past for a lot of users. Now, as per specific packaging formats, I also asked people if they used flat packs, snaps, or app images exclusively mixed with other packages or not at all. Here again, the results seem to contradict the vocal minority that criticizes flat pack, because 66% of people who answered used these flat packs mixed in with packages from other sources, and 6% only use Flatpak apps, meaning that we're at almost three quarters of respondents that do use Flatpaks daily. 
The results are not as positive for other formats though. Snaps are not being used at all by 84% of people who answered and 54% of people are just not using app images at all. And of course, since I regularly talk positively about Flatpak and way less so about snaps and app images, chances are people who follow me are already pretty much liking Flatpak. So that could explain this skew. But also, I think it's pretty clear that Flatpak is the format that people will just go towards if they have to pick between Flatpak, snaps and app images. It's just the most accomplished of the three right now. On the topic of applications, Firefox seems to be the absolute most popular browser here at 68% with an extra 9% for Firefox derivatives like LibreWolf. Brave takes a sizable 8%, Chrome 6% and the rest is pretty anecdotal. Of course, here as well, since I regularly talk about privacy and how Chromium based browsers are the bane of the open web, maybe people who follow me use Firefox a lot more than the rest of Linux users. But also Firefox is the default for virtually every Linux distro, so I am not super surprised here. As for using applications made for a specific desktop environment, most people seem not to care too much about that. 59% of people who answered said that they prefer apps made for the desktop environment they use, but they wouldn't limit themselves to them if there's a gap that is filled by an app made for something else. 37% of people just do not care about that at all and will use any app using any toolkit on any desktop and only 4% draw a hard line at the toolkit used by an application completely limiting themselves to what looks right on their desktop. This one doesn't really surprise me. I am pretty hardcore myself on using apps that are meant for my desktop, but even I will use stuff that was not designed for KDE Plasma specifically if it works better than the alternative. Now a few other things to finish. Most people who answered run Linux only without another OS. That's 63% of answers. 30% run a dual boot with Windows. 1% dual boot Linux with Mac OS. And 2% run a Linux plus Linux dual boot. The remaining 4% run various configurations of Windows plus multiple Linux distros or Windows plus Mac OS plus Linux. People also don't seem to define themselves as distro hoppers as 42% answered they've been using the same distro for a while, 33% said they almost never switch distros, and 21% said they do switch from time to time, but they will stick to what they use for long periods of time. And of course, I did not set specific time limits that I would consider to be a long time for using a distro, because it will be different for most people. So I let people define themselves into each of these categories without assigning arbitrary time values. And finally, people use their Linux PCs for virtually everything under the sun. 80% of respondents said they use them for leisure and learning, 80% for general office work, 58% for gaming, 44% for developing native programs, as in not web apps and websites, 41% for web dev, 34% for other pro activities like graphics design, video editing and the like. Which seems to confirm my viewpoint that people saying that Linux is not ready for general desktop use or for professional instances, they just misinformed. Like a lot of people are using Linux for any kind of task available. We might have some gaps, but we're definitely a usable solution right now. Okay, so what did we learn here? Well, personally, I can now re-evaluate my biases, at least for my community. I thought Arch Linux was kind of a niche thing and NixOS as well, but I learned that a lot of users who watch my content are also pretty advanced or at least are able to use distros that aren't just plug and play with a graphical installer and click next 20 times, which is interesting. I also learned that GNOME and KDE are really kind of on par in terms of usage, but tiling window managers are way more popular than I thought. Just like Wayland is way more popular than I thought as well, just like Flatpaks are way more popular than I thought as well, and Nvidia is in the same case also. So I have to reevaluate my priorities on what I cover on the channel now. And maybe, hopefully, this taught you a thing or two. So don't hesitate to let me know in the comments what you think about those numbers. Did they surprise you? Did they not? Do you have 
any explanation on why these numbers might be so high or so low? Are there any biases linked to my channel or the community? Or do they reflect what you were thinking about what people actually use? Let me know in the comments. Don't hesitate to like the video as well so I know you enjoy this kind of content and I can make more in the future. And in the meantime, let me tell you about this video sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed. As we've seen in the survey, this isn't necessarily your favorite way of getting a computer, but it's definitely one that you should try because it means that everything runs perfectly under Linux. All the hardware is supported no matter the distro you use because Tuxedo contributes upstream when they encounter issues in their testing of the hardware. And if those patches haven't been accepted yet, they have repos that let you install all of that. They have a big range of devices that will cover every price point and every need, whether you need something for general office work, lightweight, a little laptop, or you need a high-end workstation or a gaming computer, they have it all. All the devices are very customizable. You can also open the laptops, repair them and upgrade them. You can have your own custom keyboard layout, your own logo, a laser etched on the lid of your computer. You decide how things work. I only use Tuxedo computers these days to run the channel and to game, so I can only recommend them. So if you need a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, check out the link in the description below and get yourself something from Tuxedo. Okay, so thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, turn on notifications, write a comment, recommend it, share, whatever. You know how things work. And if you really enjoy the channel and you want to support what I do, I left plenty of links in the description of the video with a bunch of perks for Patreon members and YouTube members as well. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!